Today I have a special guest, a very interesting one. This is the artist Albena Baeva. Uh, Albena is working uh, the intersection of art, technology, and uh, social uh, science. And uh, we have a bit of uh, history with her because she was one of the uh, speakers that the she led at a digital conference uh, last year. Uh, and uh, also, at the moment, for those of you who are in Bulgaria, in Sofia, uh, you can visit until 22nd the, uh, our creative space at MOBG and to see two of her pieces. Uh, we'll talk a little bit uh, more about this, but maybe to say uh, a few words about um, Albena. Uh, she is visual artist and curator and producer and um, in her interactive installation for urban spaces and galleries, uh, she's using um, ML and artificial intelligence um, uh, tools. Uh, she also uses uh, physical computing, creative coding and uh, DIY practices. Uh, most special about Albena is that uh, uh, she has uh, two Master of Arts uh, um, uh, in terms of her background and one if in, is in the restoration uh, while well, the other is in the digital art, both of them from National Academy of Art in Sofia. Uh, so before us is an artist who has specialized in technologies of art uh, from 12th until 21st century. Um, and uh, her stage is the world uh, and uh, she has uh, um, lots of uh, um, pieces has been uh, shown in, in SO in Austria, Emma in Finland, uh, in Serbia, in Austria, in, uh, I said it, in Czech Republic, Cyprus, Denmark, France, Finland, Germany, uh, long list. Uh, she also is a co-founder of the uh, Runabout project, uh, which is a platform for new performance instruments, as also of the studio for interactive design, uh, reactive, uh, and the gallery gallery. Um, I'm sure in our discussion, uh, Obena will share more on uh, uh, how you can uh, virtually visit uh, some of the expositions in the gallery gallery. And maybe to finish uh, with this uh, uh, intro, I only want to mention that uh, she also won the International SO Art Award for Contemporary Art in 2011 and also big uh, special uh, invitation uh, uh, at the same year as also uh, she received Everything is Just Fine uh, award uh, from the Bulgarian Front, uh, Front of Women in 2019. And I'm stressing and finishing with this award because we are on the territory of uh, women, uh, digital women, but uh, uh, also will speak uh, both for the uh, professional territory, uh, but also for the feminine uh, dimension of life as every time in our discussions. Uh, with no further uh, delay and uh, long speeches from my side. Um, I want to say again uh, uh, hello to Albena. Before words, uh, uh, for those of you who are following uh, us online now, uh, you can uh, follow uh, this meeting in Facebook, where you most probably are already, and to ask your question uh, in the chat. Uh, and of course, uh, you um, will publish, as usual, uh, the interview in our YouTube channel of Bulgarian Center of Women in Technologies. Uh, it's also in uh, many podcast platforms, in Spotify, in iTunes, in Google Podcasts, and of course, many others. Uh, so, Bena, uh, good evening. Uh, Hello. Uh, thank you for having me in this conversation. Yeah, uh, very pleased and uh, very curious uh, from our uh, talk to come. Um, I want to start with a question. You specialize first, first in restoration uh, in the Academy of Art, as I've mentioned, uh, 
what brought you then uh, to the digital art, which is totally different territory? Tell us more about uh, your professional path. Uh, so, uh, when I had to apply here in Bulgaria, after my graduating uh, my high school, I wanted to do something with art, but my background was uh, from uh, the English language school, not from an art academy, no artistic background, no artistic family and, and so on, so I was quite insecure. And uh, the system here is that uh, you decide when you're like 18 or 19, what you want to study for the next five years. And you just, uh, you don't go and study main, mainly general art, but you have to pick a very specific specialty. So uh, based on my uh, humanitarian background, I decided that restoration is something that I can achieve because I didn't know that you know, do I have a talent? Am I good enough for an artist? And all these insecurities that you can have from um, a younger age. And so uh, that is what I uh, started uh, studying. Uh, and I studied it for five years. During these five years, uh, I uh, managed to uh, find uh, myself more into the art world. And uh, after I finished restoration, I decided I wanted to give it a try. I want to uh, try and uh, uh, do something with contemporary art. Uh, I think I lost Sasha. Uh, I'm not sure. Sasha, do you hear me? I lost you. Is it uh, my, the problem with my connection or it is the problem with your connection? I'm back. You're back. Okay. So uh, I decided I want to give a shot at the art, contemporary art. But then by that time, I uh, pretty much uh, could imagine all possibilities with traditional art. So I, I said, okay, I'm interested in something new. I want to learn new things. And uh, with a background of restoration, all the possible uh, techniques you learn uh, during your uh, routine and studies. So. Uh, I uh, entered and enrolled into the first digital art program in Sofia, master's program, digital art. And this is where I finally found my, uh, my thing, uh, because it was a lot about logic, it was a lot about programming, but uh, there was so much place for creativity and um, different topics. And uh, the most interesting thing for me in restoration, especially in the beginning, was that while with painting or drawing or sculpturing, I could imagine exactly how I could paint the thing or how I could draw the, the lines and what outcome I would have. But with digital art and the interactive installation I was building, I never knew what will be the effect at the end by such an extent. So it was interesting until the end of the object until people saw it and interacted with the object, uh, then you could actually see the object. And uh, so there was a, a moment of surprise that made uh, the whole process much more interesting for me. This moment of surprise, what will happen at the end? I cannot imagine every step of it. So this was uh, something that also was uh, really important for me. And encouragement. Uh, but you are today at the territory of the artificial intelligence and the art that uh, is producing different things. I'm uh, very curious by being non, not professional in the field, especially now uh, when we had the opening and we have everyday people coming uh, to, to see your pieces in, uh, uh, in our space. Uh, more generally, uh, what you believe is needed in accordance more artists like you to choose uh, uh, this uh, multi-facet uh, interdisciplinary territory of uh, art and uh, uh, can you share your view on how we can build those type of uh, uh, artists uh, given your challenges on the way and uh, uh, eventually the experience with people like you here and internationally is a new thing. Like the most important thing for uh, us to have more uh, interdisciplinary artists 
is uh, lays in the structure of our educational system. Uh, for one thing, uh, we need to open our uh, classical system towards more contem contemporary approaches. For example, we are still in a very academic, uh, old school system where you enter and enroll at the age of 18 or 19 in a speciality and then you spend there four or five years and uh, you stay only in this uh, knowledge, uh, learning the technology, learning the craft. So if you work with textiles, you work only with textiles. If you work with wood carving, you work only with wood material or metal material, or this is a very fragmented, separated path for an artist. Contemporary artists should be open and is open and need to experiment with different materials, different styles, different techniques. It needs to know a lot more about the world than the craftsmen from uh, 19th century or 18th century. Uh, so, uh, in a way, uh, this is one of the things that we uh, we need to reform. It's the educational system, and not only, like for example, coding comes from computer science, and uh, a lot of young artists today. I have uh, just a couple of weeks ago on one of the gallery gallery openings, I talked with a young artist and. Uh, she studying textile and she said, where I can learn what you're doing, where I can learn these things. I'm very curious how to mix them with textile. And uh, the artists are ready, but they're insecure because they lack the knowledge. And for example, there are very interesting experiments since like the past 10 years with e-textile and uh, different machines programmed to need and knitting machine and knitting technique, which is quite similar at pattern making with coding. But this is something that is not uh, in, in uh, the program, the, the, the curriculum in, in, in the academy or in the textile program. So uh, we need more paths to other, uh, not only in the different materials in the, the context of an art education, but also different connections with the different science, sciences, uh, uh, computer science, philosophy, uh, history, and, and uh, I don't know, like uh, chemistry, biology. This is, uh, uh, artists needs to have the uh, knowledge and the basis to learn more from uh, other uh, fields. For example, for me, uh, having uh, my background in respirations, I had classes in chemistry, uh, biology, uh, and uh, physics, because as a restorator, you need to do a lot of uh, examines and, and lab tests in order to uh, analyze the situation of your uh, art piece in order to take the right decision for the repairments you have to do. So I had this plus in, in the restoration program to uh, see a lot of different aspects of the different processes that are connected with art. And this was only enriching me. And this would be wonderful if all of the other specialities also have the access towards such, uh, such things. Uh, you are speaking of um, uh, academics uh, where the foundations uh, are developed, but uh, can we afford today uh, to rely only on the university uh, studies? Um, and uh, this is more universal question because uh, it is valid for the art, but it is valid for every single uh, territory. This mixture between knowledge is um, a, an example comes to my mind, a friend of ours, uh, uh, who is also from our community of change makers, as you are, uh, who is uh, working, he's a medical doctor and who is working on a 3D printing of organs. Imagine how many components in addition to autonomy, to uh, the effect that uh, uh, obviously uh, certain uh, uh, let's say implants in a in a body uh, needs to be studied, and this is not something that you can get from the uh, from the university. We uh, 
um, I believe that we are in time of uh, transition where we need to study every single day, no matter in which a, uh, HR. But because artificial intelligence in the art is something uh, very new, uh, I uh, I would be uh, happy if uh, we uh, have a small dialogue on what else, in addition to modernizing the the traditional education, can help uh, for those open-eyed uh, young people, as uh, the girl that you just uh, mentioned, to have easy access to experiment, to learn, to have an exposition, and to grow in that area. What is your opinion? And I have also a couple of ideas. <laughs> I, I it's uh, I'm absolutely I absolutely agree with you that uh, you need to learn all the time. So uh, I have I, I learn every day something new. Uh, I started to, uh, taking more time and uh, interest in artificial intelligence only a couple of years ago, three or four. Uh, so I uh, I kind of started from scratch with everything. I need, I needed to learn and read so much new things that my head was exploding, and I was all the time searching for uh, a, a way how to learn it, these things easier because they, all of the lessons and the tutorials online, which is amazing base for everybody to learn nowadays, like uh, YouTube is. Fantastic. <laughs> I, I can have a couple of degrees based on what I uh, daily uh, watch as tutorials there. But um, uh, my main point is that there weren't so many uh, materials for artists because I, I didn't want it to program a whole new complicated artificial intelligence, but to catch a grab or figure out how I can uh, work with uh, this technology as an artist and uh, with a topic. So uh, I believe that uh, uh, when uh, uh, if if we want to have more people working with the technology, we need to create small workshops. Uh, to uh, for example, now I figure out a couple of technologies and new things, and then I have to do a small workshop. I can give uh, back to more people. So this is a, a more uh, not academic, but. Uh, uh, a system for uh, learning uh, and uh, um, learning by doing by doing yeah. and yeah of course but it, it's something that is like workshop the workshop system it's not new uh, it it is uh, out there for a lot of years uh, since I was a student I have taken numerous uh, different uh, workshops, couple of day workshops uh, for animation, on, for sculpture or, or whatever I was interested in. So we need more of that. Uh, like even if the academic is too slow to reform, which is normally this, this is the case, uh, in order to, to compete and to be more flexible, we need all these uh, small systems of short-term uh, couple of day workshops on the hot topics that uh, we and I also, with other uh, professionals. Uh, what I also um, would think of uh, based on the experience that uh, is applicable in every single field of, uh, uh, for knowledge exchange is that uh, communities of people that have common interests, communities where they can exchange experiences, uh, even information about uh, good content, uh, or um, let's say repository of uh, materials or uh, access to funding, because uh, those are experimental, um, uh, let's say, uh, territories you are operating that uh, requires technology, they require uh, access to big data analysis, uh, they require uh, also um, expensive techniques sometimes, workstations in accordance to be able to produce uh, good visuals and um, uh, access to galleries. So I believe that th those networks are fundamental at the moment, platforms of people that can collaborate in different way in accordance the whole knowledge to uh, be shared, but uh, obviously the community to, to, um, to grow.
uh, that's my view on this. Yes, of course, funding uh, for the development of the new is uh, crucial, but because uh, we don't have that here in Bulgaria, we need to be much more resourceful and uh, clever in order to uh, actually compete in, in the other world. And another point is uh, that is also uh, very important is uh, uh, opportunities for not only local uh, development, but also to connect with other specialists all over the global world which uh, is actually happening much more now in the past two years than I have ever seen uh, due to that ev everyone had to turn their lives online and uh, transform uh, their um, ways to work uh, through uh, a, a, a digital uh, video conference calls that uh, kind of uh, managed to be much more open and you don't have to buy an expensive ticket and go to a workshop in another country. Now you just uh, apply or, you know, switch your Zoom at seven o'clock in the evening. So uh, things are That's one. happening very fast, yeah. Those Not are some of the good side effects of uh, pandemic. And we don't talk on uh, this big topic, but uh, at least uh, this was uh, a stimulus for a uh, different way of uh, collaborating and exchanging for artists, but not only for everybody uh, these days. Um, actually, uh, maybe moving a little bit to the uh, topic of male, female, uh, territories in the real world, uh, we are witnessing uh, still quite some biases related to traditional male-female roles in the society. You alone are an activist uh, on the topic. Um, and uh, do you believe and how we can use, if possible, artificial intelligence and art in general uh, to send a message? Um, I remember in one of your previous uh, works, um, uh, you, uh, you were creating a monster that was uh, using uh, those uh, sexist messages uh, in a very convincing way presented visually. Also in one of the installations uh, that is exhibited in our space at the moment, uh, uh, the AI is producing uh, a topical manifesto. Um, so, uh, do you believe that uh, we can do with AI something that we cannot do uh, easily uh, with the in the real environment in general? I uh, yes, uh, like the, I, if I have to like I will answer the last question and then unravel uh, my thought after. Uh, I, I think that uh, we will achieve much different outcomes uh, with artificial intelligence. Uh, from one point, everything happens much more faster on a scale that we don't, now we are starting to understand it. We don't really get what is happening in social context uh, with the algorithms in the game and uh, about prejudice, about biases. Uh, for example, at the moment, uh, the past couple of years, a, a lot of conversations and discoveries were made that we transfer our biases towards the algorithms and artificial intelligence. Because what we have now is not like a general artificial intelligence or a real artificial intelligence. We have a very complicated statistical models. And these statistical models are trained based on a data coming from our life, from our photos in Google, from the data sets that are built from researchers in universities, uh, in Western universities. So when we have to start analyzing the whole structure, we realize that 
it is not possible for the algorithms not to be biased or sexist because we are biased and sexist. Our communities are biased and sexist. So uh, when you start developing a new technology, uh, it, it comes with the social context, especially as general as the art algorithms and the artificial intelligence system, because these are really very complicated, but they still are a statistical models. So uh, now we are at the moment that we realize what was going on and what is happening. And so actions are actually made for clearing out the biases from the data that we feed the algorithms. So these, uh, like, I'm, I expect that this could have an effect, maybe not like a super big effect, but maybe it will be like a, a, a big wave of effect on how uh, and what uh, the conversation and the structure behind, for example, a Facebook uh, coverage uh, curated by an algorithm that is not sexist could affect our social behavior. But um, it's a step forward to starting to create better models uh, and uh, by solving uh, social issues. Of course, I don't believe that uh, we everything could be solved, so solved with technology, uh, like artificial intelligence won't be the answer of everything. Our uh, social problems, our models uh, and uh, paths that we are building our societies around, we need to change that. But the other thing is also we need not to allow for the technology to be uh, dominated by a patriarchal uh, regime. Uh, but do you believe that uh, social isolation um, that is uh, part of uh, the trend today uh, because of the COVID restrictions is helping in that area? Because uh, my opinion is that uh, we only can collectively elevate uh, and overcome uh, those uh, limitations of today and biases uh, uh, if uh, we interact in a different way. That's my, uh, my opinion. So maybe I'm wrong, maybe technology, maybe the ability you to digitally access more people in a different way uh, can uh, create a new collective uh, wisdom. Um, but um, um, I doubt personally because uh, uh, you communicate personally uh, face to face with people in a different way and uh, in many more uh, um, channels uh, than uh, uh, your limited face <laughs> like today. That's more philosophical, but it will be interesting to, to hear your opinion because uh, uh, it will be uh, very strange if COVID is not part of uh, any discussion these days. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. Uh, like, uh, unfortunately, uh, and I uh, really am very sad to say that, but uh, the current situation that uh, forces behind walls uh, and living only digitally, uh, socializing only digitally, have uh, a great impact on our uh, social well-being and mental issues difficult for a lot of people and especially uh, a great weight was uh, put on uh, women female professionals because now you lack the child care system the schools online uh, homeschooling home office a lot of cooking no restaurants like uh, this is something that a lot of uh, women had to take alone while keep trying to keep the job if they manage to keep it anyway. So uh, this digital transformation uh, didn't solve our problems. And uh, I think it showed us how fragile our uh, achievements in the movements were. So it shows us how easily a big uh, pandemic or a big social uh, 
crush or a tremor, uh, turbulence uh, could uh, set us back. And maybe this is the good thing. Maybe this is the thing that it has to say, no, but we actually didn't achieve the equality and we need to keep on talking about it, fighting about it and, and trying to figure it out. I attended numerous uh, uh, workshops about artificial intelligence and it was uh, one was very interesting about AI resistance workshop and um, uh, one of the leaders were Timothy Greenwood and uh, she's, she's famous uh, with that, that she stand against Google as uh, atheist. She was fired by Google because she said things that Google didn't like about their ethical issues in, um, in how they uh, train their algorithms. And um, uh, the thing is that uh, I really wanted to achieve in this workshop to figure out how we could hack the system with the help of artificial intelligence because this is what i'm really interested in it is obviously that the game is rigged or it, it is uh, you know we, we have a lot of uh, things to do more in order to achieve balance and uh, equal equality between sexes but how uh, we can use this huge tool this powerful machine in our advantage and uh, I still don't know this answer, uh, but I will keep asking this question. How can we do that? And one option is clear as much as biases as possible, or try to be open, try to create algorithms that uh, solve your specific problem. Don't let uh, a big corporation uh, develop a, a powerful uh, technology uh, to solve their own problems. So maybe grassroots organizations have to have the access uh, to a knowledge base at least uh, in order to uh, create tools that could counteract the problems that they have. Uh, I think this is happening. Um, this is happening uh, and maybe also because of the pandemic, uh, the traditional ways of activism uh, uh, moved a lot on online and uh, allows in a much uh, faster um, way to engage more people that are sharing uh, same cause. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, the um, this uh, is evolving process. Uh, we cannot um, maybe uh, make a momentary picture and say, okay, for two years or for last 10 years, uh, something mi miraculous happened. Just, uh, I see, uh, people more encouraged on one level, uh, that, uh, uh, by the example, by the models that they see, uh, from community that eventually, uh, you wouldn't have a chance to meet and also self-organizing through platforms uh, in uh, uh, acting together or in your example in contra acting to to uh, what possibly commercial uh, motivation uh, of uh, people that are controlling at the moment those systems uh, can uh, can uh, uh, cause us and also we see an attempt legislation to uh, be introduced uh, to limit this process, but that's a little bit outside uh, from uh, our territory of uh, dialogue uh, because we also have limited, uh, limited time today. So uh, I want to bring you a little bit more on a private level, if you allow me. I know that your partner is also digital artists. Uh, is this helping or not, or is, uh, 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 let's say a hindrance in your way, uh, compared to your story? I remember a very, very gifted, uh, digital artist, also a friend of uh, mine, uh, her partner is a cook and, uh, uh has nothing to do, uh, and does not understand, uh, her time dynamics or uh, the, what she's doing, 
uh, but this is also a model of uh, uh, living together in a, in a good balance. So uh, I know uh, short answer is uh, everything is individual, uh, but uh, uh, what is your opinion? Uh, does this help to connect also on this professional level with your partner or it gets boring? <laughs> I think that for us, this is uh, something that connects us. Uh, our uh, ideas, our professional interests, our um, uh, desire to uh, learn and uh, to compete. So uh, I cannot imagine to uh, have a, a different partner that doesn't understand what I'm doing. Uh, a lot of our processes is that we are not only partners in our personal lives, but we are also partners in crime. We have a lot of projects together. Uh, we have worked on numerous uh, projects, uh, labs, uh, in Reactive, uh, which is an interactive design studio. Now we run together uh, the router gallery, gallery and the virtual sculpture park Pushtatka which is in our studio and we curate the exhibitions together. So pretty much uh, this is our way probably of communicating. I think that if uh, we don't have this, we would just end up uh, on the sofa with the uh, current uh, show uh, on Netflix. And, and uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm happy with this uh, choice. And I think that even if this wasn't the exact person, I would probably end <laughs> with someone that I have shared interest and, and knowledge with, not only love. As someone that has uh, 32 years of uh, uh, experience in marriage, uh, uh, I can just confirm that uh, you need to have this also intellectual midpoint, uh, otherwise Net Netflix even won't have my opinion <laughs> but people are different <laughs> and um, also I, I know you have a you, you both have a, a, a young girl and um, uh, for some women uh, the maternity is a switch of uh, uh, time uh, and uh, this may be also a limitation especially if you are professional in the digital industry because technology are uh, uh, going so fast that uh, stopping for one year uh, might uh, make it difficult uh, to catch up afterwards. Uh, how was in your case and uh, do you have any uh, experience to share with the girls that are following us now or will uh, uh, listen to, to the post podcast later on? I have to admit that it is uh, uh, really uh, true that uh, uh, digital technology develops so faster that uh, things that you spent hours and days and weeks learning about in a year, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's a knowledge that you can throw in the garbage can. And uh, it, um, uh, it is, uh, for me, it was difficult to uh, return after around uh, I don't know, a couple of months after I had my daughter, uh, because my brain was very slow. I think that when you uh, I, uh, have this uh, experience with a small baby and a young child, uh, your intellectual level uh, middles with uh, specific tasks you have to do daily. So your tasks are really uh, very basic needs, very important, but very basic needs around the, the kids. Uh, that uh, I, in the beginning, I thought that my brain will never be fast enough. You know, that, you know, I was smart before, but now I'm super stupid. So that was it, <laughs> folks. But then slowly, you know, because I realized that and I was missing my previous me, I, you know, I started, you know, trying to do some things uh, to, to, you know, to <laughs> come back and start learning new things. So I ended up, uh, you know, reading more and, and, and starting to try and train an algorithm to create uh, a monster of a kind. And uh, meanwhile, I was training my kids, uh, potty training my daughter. 
and uh, drawing with her. So uh, at the end, I ended up in 2019 with an installation uh, and curating an exhibition, Electric Dreams, uh, devoted to the artificial intelligence topic. And I ended up uh, exhibiting also her uh, drawing uh, works uh, as part of one of the installations because I thought that this is so, my life was so connected with both uh, processes, you know, figuring out uh, how an algorithm generates a unique image based on a huge data set that you provide and how a young child forms uh, his own, uh, her own world, uh, habits, uh, basic functions of holding a pen uh, with you, you know, like how, how you train and how you form this uh, small human being. So it, it was really a fascinating uh, time for me to explore development in all levels. If it is a small human being or is a big human being, <laughs> that's a debatable question in my view because uh, uh, the children are uh, so creative and uh, so spontaneous that we, uh, in my view, we should uh, really discipline ourselves to communicate uh, more often with them in accordance to remind uh, uh, to remind us uh, that uh, we should keep this uh, uh, naivety, but also creativity in my view. And it's uh, just excellent uh, the experience that you shared that you uh, not only uh, didn't uh, uh, went to basics, but uh, also integrated in a natural, what was naturally integrated also in, in, your, uh, in your art and uh, I uh, uh, I have, although many years back, uh, similar experience, but uh, as time is uh, moving ahead, uh, uh, maybe in one of the next events, uh, if there is a topic, uh, uh, we'll share it. Uh, because we have a couple of questions, uh, uh, I want to ask you on my side, uh, uh, one that we always ask uh, uh, the our guests, uh, how you hack yourself, how you revitalize, what is your balancing uh, ritual, if you have uh, some uh, share the formula. Very interesting collection we have. You, we may give you the, uh, the database uh, to put it in artificial intelligence to produce a magic way <laughs> to refresh uh, later on. But what is your way? A creativity tuning. A machine. Uh, yes, you, when you are tired, like, uh, when, when you are exhausted, uh, uh, how you uh, really, uh, you return back to the balance and we are using this uh, slang because uh, software people, digital people, uh, they, they use it. That's why we uh, have uh, uh, take it from them. To hack yourself means that uh, you refresh you go to yoga whatever you are doing in accordance to make your brain uh centered and fresh again yeah yeah that's uh no i was thinking about the previous thing that you said that we can collect all this and create a hacking machine like a creativity tuning machine with all the data that you have ah, absolutely if you yeah. agree uh, we <laughs> oh, yeah. will collect from uh, that yeah that's, uh, yeah, yeah hacking, magic yeah magic uh I uh, I uh, do this uh, walking, like uh, walking in a forest uh, somewhere near, like around Sofia. There are so many paths and forests and mountains, so it's really easy to just uh, skip uh, for half a day and have a trekking uh, path in a, in a forest. Uh, so this is one of the, the things that I do and recently I just start uh, training at home for, I don't know, 20-30 minutes, real time, four times a day at home and uh, after I send everybody to <laughs> kindergarten and to work. And uh, this is something that uh, uh, refreshes my mind, uh, but walking is my main uh, way 
if I get too much uh, information and I burn out in the studio, I just go out for a walk in the park for one hour and come back. And then I let, let my brain calculate everything uh, with the fresh air, I guess. But something dynamic, definitely. Uh, that's excellent. Too. We can share uh, an experience. I also love uh, hiking uh, here in the mountains. Even sometimes I'm organizing if, of course, the other person is uh, uh, okay with this. Uh, instead of sitting for two hours in an office, uh, meeting uh, uh, at the entrance of the forest and walking uh, one hour up, one hour down. And uh, you still have very good quality conversation and at the same time you have some physical things. So uh may synchronize uh, sometimes it's an excellent uh, idea that uh, super setting yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um i'm uh, looking into uh, a few questions that uh, came from the audience uh, actually uh my uh, mero is asking uh, you just stand with women only no males <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you give your view on this? Of course, I uh, I can also give my comment. Uh, I, that's, uh, we love men. Uh, we love men. <laughs> it's, uh, I uh, stand with the uh, unequal part. Yes, that's my answer. I uh, think that males should stand with the unequal part also, not the other way around. Like. It's a very simple equation, actually. If there was a balance, that, that's the most perfect situation, I have to admit. Mm. But there is actually, no balance. To maybe uh, be a little bit more on a serious uh, note on my side, because I said we are for open for, uh, for equality and uh, we love men, but uh, uh, the reality and the statistics are uh quite uh, uh self-speaking um i was uh, 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 re uh reading recently a study uh that in the uk uh from all monuments on the street uh excluding the queen's monuments only 2.7 percent of them are memorizing uh women that uh, have of course contribution to the history uh in the art and this uh, uh is also creating values uh and also is uh, feeding if you want the uh the biases uh we have been uh, uh fighting encouraged by a friend of ours uh, for a woman that has uh, uh, devoted her life to create the uh, fundamentals of the uh, Bulgarian uh, uh, the um, uh, I don't know the English term, but uh, the special uh, medical service uh, for women, for uh, uh, supporting uh, the, the birth and um, uh, the newly born women, there is a term that I don't know, but uh, she uh, uh, practically uh, came from Paris uh, for 30 years. She uh, created the system. She created also uh, with her own money, uh, the special uh, centers in the uh, mountain for children that had uh, uh, um, respiratory uh, disease and then uh, she um, gave uh, her home uh, house um, she gave it as a, as a gift to to be built a, a hospital and uh, there was even not a memorizing uh, plate on this place uh, so because somehow uh, History is not remembering uh, about these things. It is a little bit more difficult for women, and I don't want to uh, sound sexist, but uh, maybe one final uh, data piece. 
uh, because we are on the uh, territory of innovation and um, uh, of course uh, lots of funding goes into building new projects and supporting uh, startups today worldwide only 2.5% of the invest invested money goes in the female led enterprises so um we should work against this and uh, if this sounds as unequal uh, let's maybe um uh, have this uh, topic high enough in the society debated so that we have uh, more male in power roles uh, really championing uh, uh, this change and finding back the balance yeah mm -hmm. There was no intention for me to, to give a speech, but uh, uh, no, it's uh, I agree and I support you. And a question like that should uh, have a proper answer. Yeah, women and were always part of the society of the development of this. They're just not remembered. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, but what I see as a positive uh, uh, tendency, positive trend at the moment is that we see more and more women in uh, leadership uh, roles, still this balance. And my reading of this is uh, that because it is transformational time, because we are um, practically in difficult process of a birth of a new world. That's what is happening with all the elements uh, around us. So women are the one that uh, know how to give birth and how to grow a uh, new life. And that's why uh, we see also naturally in the society more and more women that uh, either um, go in the political roles or in the sea level roles in the politics. So I believe that uh, this trend uh, is uh, having uh, the good first signals, but there is still a way to go. And we need to be awakened about this and to speak uh, on this topic in accordance to encourage more women to uh, really follow um free of biases uh, their own path and that's very part of the reason for us having those role modeling uh, uh discussions like uh, mm, the one uh, tonight is she leader in a show uh, is exactly because of that to encourage uh, more people to think on those topic to uh, get motivation from uh, uh, leaders like you for people uh, that are um, replicating the status quo in a creative uh, way. That's, uh, that's why we are doing it. And one more question I want to uh, share. This is from Capitan uh, Mohammed. Obviously, that's a nickname. Uh, but uh, the question is, can other women from other nationalities study in Bulgaria and make business in Bulgaria? Uh, most probably uh, it is um, related to the, uh, to the Academy of Art, I can imagine, because generally, of course, uh, there is a possibility for every, for international uh, students to to come and study in our universities, but how is the situation in the academy of art? If you if you know it, in the academy, it's like everywhere else, the system. So you could uh, apply uh, the exams, and if you pass the exams, you can uh, enroll. And I think that uh, uh, before when I was studying in academy, the exams were separate for foreign uh, students. So you compete to, not with the local students, but on an additional exam. And so uh, we, had, we have always had uh, uh, foreign students in our groups. Most of them are coming from Macedonia because it's nearby and it's easy and the language is not such an issue. And also in Macedonia, they don't really have an academy like this. In restoration program, there was always at least two Macedonian students. Uh, I have to admit that 
most of them were male, my colleagues, but also in the other specialities, there were a lot of uh, uh, female uh, students and artists. So uh, this is not a problem. One of the problems with the imbalances uh, in the academy and the female-male balance is that we have much more female enrolling and finishing the academy uh, while studying, but uh, much more male artists being promoted and uh, uh, having a professional career after and being famous as an artist in Bulgaria. So this is a very interesting paradox with percentages actually, from 80 to 20, actually 80% female students to 20% male students. And representation in the galleries is 3-4% female artists only. So, yeah, this is also interesting, but yeah, we need to take it back, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, this reminds me uh, a story with a good friend of ours, uh, Maria Karakusheva. Uh, she's very gifted musician and uh, she was applauded by everybody uh, while she was just uh, a piano player. Uh, when she became a composer herself and uh, uh, issued her uh, first uh, um, piece of uh, uh, list of uh, songs, al uh, her first album, then suddenly <laughs> same uh, audience started to uh, ask a question how it can be that uh, uh, you became a composer because it is male dominated uh, territory so somehow the world changed so there are still those uh, i would call this legacy from the past uh, that uh, obviously slowly starts to be overcome but uh, there is a need for it to speak openly about those topics in accordance to uh, stimulate and to create a ground for uh, for everybody to uh, do what uh, he or she uh, wants to be. And uh, that's one of the purposes of Bulgarian Center of Women in Technologies. That's why it exists. Um, otherwise, we are professionals and we are very established people in, in, our, uh, in our roles, but uh, not... Um, there is a need also to have this, if you want, uh, safe space for women and um, to, to give an exposition also of female um, leaders and interesting uh, professionals. So um, our time is over. Normally we try to keep uh, these uh, uh, meetups uh, up to 45 minutes. Uh, it is already a, a, about an hour. But it was such a nice uh, conversation uh, with you, Abena. Thank you for really being open and uh, sharing also uh, your professional views and also your private experience. And um, uh, we'll see each other in person very soon. But uh, to say again uh, for everybody who is in Sofia until 22nd, you can come uh, at MUBG uh, Creative Space, which is at uh, Serdica 20, and to see uh, two of the um, pieces of uh, uh, installations and uh, video work of uh, Obena Baeva. Uh, for more information, uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can write us or uh, go in the MUBG uh, uh, website and um, also on the Bulgarian Center of Women in Technology um, one. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, to all of you, we won't see each other uh, until the um, end of December. This was our last edition. Uh, Merry Christmas, peaceful uh, and happy holidays and all the best uh, to you and to your families. And uh, Albena, uh, have a good evening tonight and uh, see you soon. Thank you. See you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.